Hi and welcome to today's webcast with Rotneros. Today we have the CEO Lennart Ebele and the CFO Pia Olsson with us. My name is Martin Westerlund and I work for Finwire. After the presentation there will be a Q&A session. If you have any questions for Lennart and Pia, please visit finwire.tv and click on this webcast. And with that said, I hand over the word to you, Lennart and Pia. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Martin. And hello to everybody and to our Q1 report for 2022. It is a fantastic quarter that we have behind us. And if it wasn't for the troublesome times that we live in in Europe currently, it would have been even greater pleasure and joy to present it today. Nevertheless, we have achieved a record high profits of 145 million Swedish kroners. Uh, and this has been driven primarily by the very strong pulp market that we experience. Uh, during the quarter, the board has decided to take the next step forward for packaging and to jointly invest in a new factory in Poland with Arctic paper. And we have also proposed for today's uh, annual shareholders meeting to pay out a dividend for the profits for 2021. So all in all, a very strong quarter, which I think once again shows the resilience of the forest industry sector in troublesome times. And if you look at Rotten Roos as an investment, we are part of the circular economy. We have sustainable products, which are made from renewable raw materials. And our main material, the wood is uh, harvested around 150 kilometers from our site. So it's a local raw material. We have a lot of raw, local raw materials on top of the um, wood that we consume. And our main part of sales goes into Western Europe. So also this uh, is supporting the strong resilience of our business model. We can also see that uh, we work accordingly to our strategy to remain our establishment in niches. And over time, we generate strong cash flow from our operations. I start off by looking into the market and what has happened there recently. As I've said, the pulp market has gone through a very strong cycle. And we've seen that uh, quarter one prices have not dropped as far as we would have feared at the end of 2021. And in local currency, they already have improved. And if we look at the monthly average, this is the quarterly average. If we look at the monthly average, then we see that the prices have turned around in March after a, a very short fall of two months and stable prices in January. So this indicates that we are actually in a strong situation. The bars uh, below the graph are uh, a measure of the stock levels. You see that they are relatively uh, leveled out, but on a slightly higher level than what we usually would think is normal. And most of that is attributable to logistic problems. Pulp is uh, in places where it cannot be shipped from. Container ships cannot be unloaded still to some restrictions and ports. And all of that means that there is more pulp in transit, um, but the market is longing to get its delivery. So we see a very strong market. And on the basis of that, the prices have turned up again in March. And we will have to see how that goes going down this year. If we look at our main market, Europe, paper and board, you see that graphical paper still is a large part of it, but container board is continued growing now up to 40% and other packaging materials is another 19%. So all in all 59 or almost 60% is packaging materials. This is both integrated and non-integrated. If we look uh, to the development by the different applications in the first two months of this year, you see that uh, newsprint and uncoated still has a negative trend whereas uh, coated paper is currently experiencing a very strong market. 
Nevertheless, packaging, which is also one of our main focuses, is doing strongly. And on the back of that, we have uh, seen that the pulp market in the beginning of this year also has remained stable. Europe unchanged, a good increase in North America. China still a little bit of a uh, sluggish demand situation, mainly due to restrictions that are still in place. Nevertheless, China is a small market and our main market is Europe with more than 60% of our sales. If we look at how our sales go into various applications, uh, you see here our shares of 2021 and in brackets are the figures for 2020. So packaging and board, one of our bespoke uh, niches that we want to grow and has grown from 28 to 32%. Filter, another speciality of ours, thanks to the way that we produce our pulp has gone from 16 to 21. And you see that we are following the decline in printing and writing uh, as that has gone down from 21 to 11 in our portfolio. Electrical applications, one of our most uh, respected areas where we are one of the best suppliers to this market has gone from 11 to 13. So all in all, we are following our strategy to grow in niches where we do provide added value to our customers. And you also see tissue is more of an area where we can be flexible going in and out depending on the market situation. So we always make sure that we find sales for all the volume that we produce. Having said that, I leave over the word to Pia to guide us through the quarter one figures. Please, Pia, go ahead. Thank you, Lennart. And of course, I'm very proud to present our strongest quarter ever to you. So let's start with taking a look at the EBIT quarter one 22 versus quarter one 21. And what is driving the profitability? Uh, the last year's quarter one was actually coming out with 11 million sec. And as you see here on the great blue bar, we have a, a big improvement in the price and the currency. And as Lennart uh, showed you earlier, we actually had an improvement in the NBSK in US dollar of 35% versus last year. And actually, NBSK in SEC was improved by 50%. So that's the greatest uh, uh, part of the good result. And another positive is our volume that actually made up 2 million SEC on the improved profit. But we also have some negatives. And uh, we had our variable cost that has actually uh, decreased versus last year. And that is due to the input input goods and rising prices. And as you all know, we have a beginning inflation. So uh, that's uh, the biggest drop. And even though we have um, effective hedges that we will take a look at the next slide, uh, we have seen increases in uh, gas, wood and freight and chemicals. Also, we had some negative with 11 million in our fixed cost. And that is due to uh, lots of different parts, but mostly it's price increases in our internal cost of uh, uh, freight and also in maintenance. Um, so that was a drop by 11 million sec. But all this adds up to our best quarter ever, an EBIT of 145 million sec. Next slide, please. Thank you. And here we see a graph of the electricity price development. And this is a graph from Nord Pole with the day ahead prices. And we can see that the blue line here is describing the system price and the light green bar is uh, the line is describing the SE3 area price where we have most of our consumption. And uh, if we take a look at our hedges, they are really well functioning. We can see that the, the electricity prices have been increasing a lot since the quarter three, 2021 in September. And they have even increased more during the end of 2021 and are still on a very high level. 
but the cost, our real cost um, is actually decreasing. We had a cost of our electricity of 22 Öre uh, per kilowatt. And uh, last year at the same quarter, it was actually uh, nearly doubled. So it, it's uh, really effective hedges that we have. And uh, as you know, we are well hedged uh, forward and we have hedges until 2025 and 47% of those are in SE3 area. So that's something that we are really happy about right now. And if we take a look at our EBIT development, we can see that in 2019, we had a really strong market and we had a really good EBIT. And then we had a drop and a weakened market in 2020. And we can see that uh, 2020 was actually not a good year for us. But then the market was uh, picking up and it was an upgoing trend. And we had an upgoing trend during uh, 2021. And we can see that here in the quarter one 2022, we actually landed on a record high EBIT. And it's the best performance ever in our history. Uh, if we take a look at the, the balance sheet, we have a really strong and efficient uh, balance sheet and the good equity uh, asset ratio is actually improving. We are at quarter one, we landed on 67% and uh, we usually have a very strong cash flow, but during the end of the quarter one, we had a lot of invoices and we had a lot of current receivables during the 31st of March. And that is actually giving us a little bit less cash flow from operations than usually. Uh, and it's also um, affecting the net debt. But of course, the result is good with uh, a lot of invoicing. And the investments that we have made during the quarter one was 18 million sec. So, uh, a strong balance sheet and um, uh, with that I will turn the word over to Lennart and the way ahead. Thank you. Thank you Pia and uh, let us just look at some of the trends that are favoring pulp and our sustainable products going forward and um, as you are well aware there is an increasing number of people on the planet and also we see that the uh, disposable income is increasing, which leads to more consumption. And uh, this is driving tissue. Tissue is mainly served by uh, short fiber pulp out of Latin America. And all the increase that is coming out of there in the coming years will certainly find its home within tissue. E-commerce has driven. And as I've uh, in, uh, explained in the beginning, we see that container board corrugated packaging is growing, uh, driven by the demand for e-commerce. Uh, a lot of behaviors that we have picked up during the last two years of pandemic are certainly staying with us and will continue drive demand for packaging. We have a green transition now more than probably ever where we have to invest in renewable energy to Min, the, sort of minimize our dependency on fossil fuels in the energy mix. And that leads to investments in uh, transformators and cables and uh, distance, long distance cables to uh, transport the power from one place where it's produced to where it is consumed. So that is driving the demand for UKP, our brown pulp in E grades. And of course, sustainability, which is a ongoing drive to decrease the amount of plastic in packaging in general. And here, not only is it favoring demand for pulp, but we also see our business opportunity for formed fiber packaging. And to, to say something more about rotten roots packaging that is now in the face of creating a new factory in Poland together with Arctic Paper. It will be a 50-50 joint venture. And the capacity of that uh, factory will be around 80 million trays of a very high quality of formed fibers. Uh, we're actually the first fiber-based modified atmosphere packaging tray on the market 
which means that you you or our customers can place their product, the uh, processed food in such a product that you see there on the shelf on the right side of this picture and store it for up to three weeks and then simply warm it up in the microwave oven at home. So uh, convenience fruit product, which we see is increasing in demand quite a lot uh, in the coming time. So we see a great demand here from the market and uh, we are really looking into of getting this factory off the ground and the plan is to having it up and running by the end of 2023 and that will uh, quadruple our capacity of trace. Meanwhile, we are developing the technology in Sunne where we have our technology center and we also already are supplying into the market to create a, a thorough uh, pipeline of projects and customers into the new factory. So we have a quick ramp up of, of it once it's up and running. So to summarize this quarter, uh, driven by the strong pulp market, we've seen invoicing and profits going up to a record of 145 millions, which is uh, very good to see. Uh, we have strong earnings and uh, low investments during the first quarter. Usually they come uh, in line with the maintenance stops that are towards the end of the year. Um, as Pia have explained, the cash flow has been dampened or, or slowed down a bit by an increase in our work capital. And we are taking the next step for packaging. The pulp market as such remains strong for the time being. Um, and we see an, an increased demand from our customers in Europe there where we have a good and long lasting relation. So uh, we are happy to see how this will unfold in the coming month. And with that, I leave the word over to Martin to see if there are any questions. Please, Martin, go ahead. Thank you very much, Lanat and Pia, for that uh, presentation. And now we'll jump right into the Q&A. Let's start with the first question. Can you elaborate on the investment in Poland? Yes, I can do that. Uh, so what we've seen is the, the demand that we see in the market based on the technology that we have developed in uh, Sunna, Sweden. We simply cannot satisfy uh, what the market is asking for. So we had to start scaling up our technology and uh, to, to mitigate the risk, we were looking for a partner to do that together with an Arctic paper who has a big uh, pulp mill, a uh, paper mill, sorry, with no pulp production in Poland, just 80 kilometers east of Berlin is very well situated and located to be close to, to the great market where all the consumers are. Uh, and logistic cost is a key parameter to be cost efficient in this kind of product when you ship empty, packaging of this kind of uh, product, uh, there's a lot of air to be shipped. So the shorter the shipping distance, the better your competitive position. Um, so we are doing this together. We, the joint venture will rent uh, housing from the mill. They will also get uh, infrastructure such as electricity. Uh, we can uh, link into the mill's wastewater system. So those are actually investments that we don't have to take uh, opposed to if we would have had a greenfield installation. So we are sharing the risk and we're taking a couple of shortcuts by getting into an existing paper mill structure and uh, that is giving us uh, quite some advantages. So uh, this will actually speed up our way to industrial sized production very rapidly. Thank you, Leonard, for that answer. And we'll take the next question. Regarding the factory in Poland, how much revenue and EBIT can we expect from 60 to 80 millions of trays? We, we don't elaborate on the financials of our packaging uh, arm at this point. It is still something which is under development. Uh, we are in turbulent times uh, and we have to see how, how all these things work out. But what we know is that we are competitive compared to the existing uh, fossil based uh, solutions 
when we get uh, this kind of scale. So we'll have to come back to those numbers more in detail once things are up and running. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any additional investments in your pipeline that you can share with us today, perhaps? No, unfortunately not. What we're looking at is the usual de bottlenecking uh, quality investments and environmental investments in our sites. We are guiding roughly around 100 to 110 million Swedish kroners on an annual basis. And uh, that is what we're planning for for 2022 as well. Um, and with that, we should be able to increase our pro production and capacity utilization rate to, to where it should be. We have a long term target of increasing our pulp production with 3% per annum. And that is something we work very hard with. It's both operational excellence and it means to, to make the right investments in our pulp mills to make sure that they are up to the level where we can achieve that. Thank you very much. We'll take the next question. How does the outlook differ between pulpwood prices and fleece coming from strong, strong sawmills volumes? Are there any price differences? Uh, sawmill chips, uh, translated to English from fleece, um, are, are, are a sort of side product from the sawmills. And um, of course, as the timber prices have gone up and there is a very strong sawmill uh, cycle, they are trying to sort of mitigate parts of their increased timber prices through having increased uh, sawmill chips prices. Uh, usually, the sawmill chips are more expensive than the pulp wood that we get straight from the forest. But then again, you don't have to sort of debark it. You don't have to chip it. There is a cost in the mill uh, by converting round wood into chips at site. So it, it is usually uh, a well-balanced situation. Uh, I think more important it is to, to recognize that there is a good flow of raw material in mid Sweden out from the forest and from the sawmills. So um, we see good volumes. We don't see any problems there uh, in the near term future. But what we see is that there have been a couple of announcements now for increased pulp wood prices um, in order to make sure that the flow will not stop. So we will have to see how that develops. But uh, there might be a small note of caution that that will further increase uh, inflation on raw materials and uh, the effect that we've already seen in quarter one will of course uh, have to be monitored very closely going forward. Thank you for that answer. We'll take the next question. Congrats on the great quarter. What are you most excited about for the remainder of 2022? Uh, for once it is of course our project to uh, build the factory in, 20, in, in Poland. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on and, and, and that is very exciting. I mean, this means really step forward in the value chain for us and, and creating a basis for Rotnerus to not just be a pulp producer. And secondly, I think uh, that we are very well positioned in Europe and in our niches to really continue our strategy and turn that into sales in niches where we add value to our customers. And, and we see that there is a strong demand. Uh, it's always difficult to, to predict where the pulp market is going, um, but we have seen a very strong start so far with a well-balanced market. And it seems that logistical issues will prevail for some time to go. And of course, uh, that will um, also contribute to, to this market to be balanced uh, going forward. So let's see. Uh, but of course, there is a lot of uncertainty around of what happens. Uh, and, and we can only pray that the war in Ukraine will come to a, a very sudden stop uh, to the benefit of all of us so that we get out of these turbulent times that we have wished for during the last two years of the pandemic. Yes, I agree, I agree with that, Lennart. Uh, we'll take the next question here. Uh, could you share your views on the cost for electricity and your measures to handle this support from price hedgings? 
Well, as Pia explained, our price hedges are very effective and they uh, go forward up until 2025. We are fully hedged uh, for this year and next and more than 87% in 2024. And this gives us uh, the, um, this, the, the, the sort of possibility to work with this going forward. We are looking into complementing our financial instruments like the hedges with more long-term price agreements, uh, mostly known as uh, power purchase agreement, PPAs, where we buy um, coming into an agreement with a wind power producer, actually give them the possibility to start a new project, building new wind power. And we would uh, have the benefit of a around 15 or 18 year uh, fixed price. And, and those prices still are favorable in comparison to where the current spot prices are. So that is one of the things we're working with. But uh, of course, one other thing is to decrease our dependency on energy. So investments in uh, more efficient processes and decreasing our energy consumption per ton pulp are very favorable and very profitable at this time. So that is also something which is high up on the agenda that we're working with. So that will be part of our investments going forward. Great, thank you. And we'll take the last question. The pulp market continues to being strong. Is there anything that indicates for it to not continue this trend for the coming years? Well, I think everybody has to make their own mind of where the pulp market is going. Uh, trees do grow, but they never grow into the sky. And uh, if you look at the uh, price curves that we've seen, it's a question of demand and supply, and it doesn't take a lot of additional supply or uh, reduced demand to sort of unbalance the situation. And then prices do go up and they do go down. So I, I don't dare to say where it's going. Uh, we are currently very happy with uh, where prices are and, and we are following this very closely to make sure that we are adopting quickly and we have the flexibility and we have a very broad basis of customers and applications to be flexible and counter possible effects on the market. Okay, thank you very much Lennart and Pia for that uh, presentation and the answers to our questions. And a big thanks to all of you that have followed today's webcast with Rotneros. I hope that you have a great rest of the, the day. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Bye.